Well, XCore Aerospace has been around since 1999, and we're a company that's focused primarily on low-cost, reusable space transportation. We're initially focusing on suborbital. That's where you just go up and come right back down. But we do have plans for a fully reusable orbital system a few years after that. Uh, and along the way, we've developed a number of pieces, a number of individual technologies necessary for those craft, like rocket engines, pumps, composite locks tanks, that are now turning into lines of business in their own right. I understand that the, uh, that the Lynx uh, is designed to be capable of flying uh, over 100 kilometers in elevation and uh, is, is capable of flying uh, four flights a day. Yeah, the Lynx uh, design envelope goes up to about 350,000 feet. Um, not sure right offhand what that is in kilometers, but it's a little over 100. And uh, yeah, we target four flights per tail number per day. And that's why, incidentally, it can be a small ship, uh, which helps keep the capital cost of construction down quite low. Uh, because at four flights per tail number per day and say 200 flying days per year, counting depot maintenance, that's 800 seats per vehicle per year, uh, which is uh, a quite reasonable amount of, uh, of passenger capacity or participant capacity out of one craft. The Lynx is the name for our suborbital space vehicle. Uh, it's uh, something we've been working on for many, many years now. The, the current design concept finalized about five years ago uh, when we already had all of the pieces or the, the key pieces in place. And like most past aerospace vehicles, the Lynx is very much designed around the engine. So we began with the engines and the key there really was developing a a fully reusable rocket propulsion system that was nearly maintenance free so that we could support a very high flight rate with a relatively small crew of people on the ground. And really the, the economic concept of the Lynx is very airplane-like. It's the, what I call the Southwest Airplanes model of keep the wheel in the wheel well. You know, we, we build a small ship and we expect to fly it very, very frequently, about four times per vehicle per day. Uh, the Lynx will be our third rocket ship. The previous two concepts uh, were test vehicles that, that demonstrated some of the key technologies, including a previous vehicle in which we demonstrated seven flights in one day. So I'm fairly confident that we can achieve the, the maintenance man hours per flight that we need to pull this off. Uh, and the Lynx uh, is proceeding uh, quite nicely. We have the aerodynamic configuration just about frozen. Uh, and the structural design is proceeding, and we've been making two of the more structurally critical pieces of the vehicle. Uh, uh, we've been making test pieces of those so that we can test them and make them over a few times until we have them just the way that we want them. And I'm hoping, uh, well, paced by the rate at which we continue to raise capital for the business, that we might see test flights sometime in 2011. When do you anticipate being able to actually take uh, 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 private astronauts? Everybody always wants to know, you know how, how long the flight test program is going to be, and the answer to that is it's done when it's done. Uh, the, the, you, you, it's very difficult to predict exactly how long a flight test program might be. Uh, and of course, you don't, you don't want to find yourself trapped by your previous public statements uh, and leading you into temptation to declare that you have solved all the problems. Well, you know, what you want is to, you want the flight test program to uncover all the problems so that you can fix them.